Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this video all about my time staying at the Disneyland Hotel in Disneyland Paris. This hotel recently had a major renovation, it only reopened in I think January of this year so everything is very new, very swish, very fancy. It's also the most expensive hotel in Disneyland Paris and it is literally the one as you're walking towards the park the pink facade that is the hotel that is where you're staying you couldn't get closer to the parks than that aside from a couple of the hotels in california adventure i feel like no other park has this level of access to the parks in terms of being like right there so it's a pretty special hotel i stayed with my mum and my sister for three nights and i'm going to do an overall review of our time also get into some questions at the end that you guys had and also i have a little haul at the end of everything that i picked up all the freebies in my in a ross from friends mode so let's start out with the overall check-in process when you walk in the lobby is just stunning like it is glittery and beautiful it very much gives grand floridian vibes if you ever stayed there it's a little bit smaller well quite a bit smaller but it has this like really magical feel there's a beautiful portrait up of the castle there's loads of seating area and it's a pretty smooth check-in process to be honest you can choose to check in on the app instead like if you've got a room number you can activate a digital pass but i just wanted the whole like check-in process with someone at the front desk it was just a very special experience and they give you your room key in one of these little wallets it says disneyland hotel and then the card is inside this is also your pass to get into the park so everything is on this card so it does say in here you can also use your phone as a digital key download the disneyland paris mobile app sign on and create a disney account like your hotel booking to activate your digital key your disney park tickets are also on the app so we were staying in the west wing there's two sides the east wing is where the lobby is at there's like a walkway going across like horizontally as if you're walking across the entrance of the park and then the west wing's on the other side so we were in the west wing obviously further away from the lobby and we were on floor four room three four six zero so it is a bit of a walk to get there especially when you have your cases with you originally you have to go from the lobby up the lift to the next level which is like where the grand staircase is you then walk along there's another lift to go up to another two floors and then you walk along again so our room was like one of the furthest i'd probably say from the lobby we did actually have to change rooms for our last night of our day but i'll get to that later but we actually timed it and it took about three minutes 30 seconds to get from our room to the lobby so you're talking like four minutes to get to the park front gate so it's still crazy close it's just not as close as if you were in the east wing but i'm assuming those rooms are a bit more expensive so yeah you get this when you check in and then you also get this which says once upon a stay with this gorgeous embossing is that what it's called it's like a rose gold effect just stunning open it up and you have all of the times here it says in this folder you will find a fairy tale guide that includes everything you need to know to have the most wonderful of stays at the disneyland hotel and the top it says oh i haven't read this the time has come for you to set off on your royal adventure a magical story you will remember forever and ever so cute your royal fairy tale and this is just like information all about the hotel welcome home your highness this is from the general manager at the disneyland hotel um and then we have some more information i love this little like detail there that shows you the lobby and there's just like more stuff that you can know about like booking in different packages they have the spa the health club the overall maps you can see obviously there's like the two different wings and the connecting part between them the stuff all about the restaurants we didn't actually eat any of the restaurants or the bar um i'll get to that later but yeah little information like help yourself to the mini bar as an honored guest may it please you to learn that the soft drinks and snacks in your mini bar are complimentary for anything else you wish for a bottle of champagne perhaps simply call the room service so that was a nice touch just to have like there was a couple little snacks and then i had like an apple juice i think and a water oh this is cute section for photos and notes from your Day. so yeah sort of things like that are just like the added extras that make it very very special when you first check in so now we get to the actual room our room was huge we just had the most basic room it's called the superior room but it's like the standard room that they have the lowest price and then from there you go up to like superior with a balcony i think and there's like the more deluxe rooms then there's the castle club then there's a suite we had the most standard cheapest room that you can have at a Disneyland hotel but that being said our room was huge I have seen since that our room was like on a corner we saw it on the map so it was bigger than most of the superior rooms we had a lot more space at the end of the beds than you had in a standard room but it was just magical it was a lot bigger than i feel like a lot of the disney world rooms are immediately we walked in and they have different portraits above the two beds so there's loads of different princesses you could get we got aladdin and jasmine and genie for like our first room we had beauty and the beast for our second one i will say like there was a slight bit of disappointment when i got jasmine originally because she is like my least favorite princess but that aside i was like I'm in the Disneyland Hotel, like there's nothing to complain about here. You can go on the app a week ahead of time and request a specific princess. I did request Frozen, obviously we didn't get it. I'm sure everyone requests Frozen. I also don't know if they even like look at that 
so yeah something to know that you can try but there's no guarantees on the app as well seven days before you can request like an accessibility room a room near the lobby or a room on a quiet floor all different features but there's no guarantees like i said that you'll get it because obviously we did not so they have the portraits above the beds the beds themselves were huge so many fluffy pillows so comfortable there is a huge mirror which also doubles as the tv you turn it on there's this beautiful loop playing and they like flip through the storybook through all the different princesses there is a gorgeous rapunzel mirror in the corner with a chair there's little details everywhere throughout the room so the carpets had lots of little details like they had aladdin's lamp snow white's apple and then speaking of snow white the bathroom has a mirror which is themed seven dwarves so they have them all around the edge and snow white in the middle the bathroom was so nice it wasn't like the biggest but it did have a separate toilet to the overall shower and like getting ready area the shower pressure for like people want to know it was top notch it also supplied shampoo and conditioner it was in like ones that were fixed to the wall but there were various things like soap and body lotion that were included in the room again i'll show you at the end in my little haul of everything i brought home and then additionally to that they had robes hanging up in the wardrobe there was plenty of hanging space considering most people don't stay at disneyland paris longer than i'd say three or four days so definitely enough space there even if it was four people staying in the room there was a hair dryer i don't know if there was an iron i'm sure you could request one if you wanted one they also had slippers and they had a safe underneath that as well there was plenty of drawers space obviously there was a mini bar and I think that's about it for kind of like what was in the room our first room was just like obviously like I said the superior room and then when we got upgraded it was a superior room with a like terrace so the doors at the end opened up and you could actually have like a little view of people walking in and out of the parks which was so cool to see and just like looking out and seeing the pink hotel that was the other thing our first room the window was glossed over so we literally looked out onto the roof and probably like the car park so you can actually see through it but the curtains were also a 10 out of 10 they blocked out all the light so you're not being woken up early in the morning another thing to note is obviously you are right at the park so some people might be like is there an issue with noise we actually missed the fireworks on the second night we were like let's just have an earlier night and we didn't hear a thing so they must have some kind of triple quadruple glazing going on because when we were in newport bay which is about a 15 minute walk away from the park we could hear the fireworks there so i don't know what they've got going on but it was pretty amazing to not be able to hear anything and alice was even up at that time and she was like yep no fireworks down whatsoever so now come to any like slight niggles or problems that we had and also obviously leading to us changing rooms for the final night so the main thing that bothered me was the light in the toilet that's attached to the bathroom it turned on automatically i'm someone that always needs the toilet in the night and i do not want this light blaring on like i would literally prefer to pee in darkness and there was no way to turn this automatic light off like you would come into the bathroom that was fine i feel like that wasn't an automatic one you had to kind of like switch it on and off a lovely detail as well is they had like rapunzel's sun for when you need to turn the daylight lights on and then they had like a moon for the nighttime mode which was very sweet but anyway you go into like the bathroom and then you turn right and go into separate toilet and the light just comes on and it is so bright and in the night it was like i just don't want this like i'm now wide awake and i'm just like sat there trying to not let the sleep go away from my eyes that was the only thing that i found quite annoying and i was like trying to find out if there was any way that we could get rid of this but it seemed like it was like a permanent thing i see the point they're like oh it's nice it just turns on automatically but i would like an option for it not to please and thank you and then the only other issue that we had in the room was the USB-C chargers. So on the left-hand side of the bed, the middle of the two beds and the other side of the bed, they had multiple charging outlets. They had, they even had ones for UK plugs actually, which was very convenient. They had French outlets, USB ones, and then USB-C. My sister and my mum both have the latest iPhone, so that's the one they use to charge. And on the first night they realized that they weren't working. So the following morning, mum was like, I know it's not a big deal, but we've paid a lot to be here like I kind of want everything to work went to the front desk asked if they could look to it during the day and they were like yep yep of course it'll be fine so we came back around lunchtime just for a look in the hotel gift shop and like to have a wander around asked if it had been fixed and they were like oh someone's going right now so we were like great it's being fixed fantastic we go back to our room later in the day and it has not been fixed so mum calls the front desk they were like we'll send an electrician right now to come see it and it's like mm, I thought you sent them earlier but anyway so they come supposedly fix it but then later that night, mum tries to charge her phone and it's not working again. So the following morning, which is our penultimate morning, mum goes down to the front desk and she's like, the USB-C chargers, please. We would really like these to be fixed. And they were like, oh, madam, of course, we'll get it fixed. We went to the hotel about five o'clock that day to kind of like freshen up before going to dinner and ask if it's been fixed. And they were like, hmm, it has not been fixed. Again, it's not a big deal, but also you paid a lot to be there. Considering the hotel only opened in January, you kind of hope by July everything is still working. They basically said, what we can do is move you to a different, bigger room. And we're like, frozen sweet. Like, we genuinely gaslit ourselves into thinking we were going into one of the suites, which are like absolutely huge, crazy expensive. I will never stay there. Um, but you know, 
a little bit of Delulu is the Salulu. So we go back to our room, get everything packed up in literally five minutes, go back to the main reception, and they say that we are still in the West Wing, but it's a bigger room with, they had like two choices. You could either be looking at the car park and be in the East Wing, so the main building, or stay in the West Wing and have a look over at like kind of the exit entrance of the park. We obviously chose that one. So we go back along with our new room key, and the second time around we got Beauty and the Beast as the kind of portraits of our bed, and that was just, beautiful. I have been a bell girl since I was literally like three years old. It's always been my favourite so to have that was truly very special. It's kind of strange because I feel like it's a lovely touch to have the princesses above the beds but if you get one that you don't like it can kind of like affect the room which sounds really silly but like they have Raya as one of the princesses. I respect that movie. I know it had a bit of a, like a rough rollout being during the pandemic but if you've paid all that money and you get Raya and you've not seen the movie like it's a bit annoying so i'm like oh, it's almost better if they don't have the portraits or like have two different princesses so at least you've got like a choice that's just a really petty thing of me to say because walking in and getting beauty and the beast i was just instantly like so happy versus when i saw the jasmine ones and i was like okay that's fine like it can really affect your initial impression of the room which again sounds really silly because you paid that money to be there and like it should be magical whatever princess you get and it was but it's crazy how much like that little detail can affect kind of your overall view of the room which sounds again like i know it sounds so ridiculous but i'm sure some people can relate it's almost become a thing as well i've seen like when people post their room tours people commenting like oh you got this princess or you got this one like i didn't get that so people do care it's not just me the second room in addition to having that little like terrace it wasn't a full-on balcony but you could like stand outside and look there was nowhere to sit you had the fresh air and you had a little bit of a view it was just even bigger than our original room which already felt huge but other than that it was like pretty much the same just obviously having that free flowing air when you have the terrace. Now we'll come to like the overall facilities of the resort, which we didn't really make the most of um, because <laughs> they were expensive. So there is two restaurants, the Table de Lumiere, which is like three course set menu. And I believe it's 120 euros for those three courses. There are characters again at that meal, but 120 euros, like I'm simply not paying that. Especially as a vegetarian, set menus kind of bug me because you're paying the same price as someone getting the most premium meat option and mine is costing maybe like a quarter if that of the price. So immediately we were like, that one's not for us. We did book reservations for the buffet, which is a hundred euros and it has Mickey, Minnie, Donald and Daisy and they're like royal attire and they're like a full buffet. It looked very impressive. But then I saw things online saying that most of the buffet or like the main appeal of it was all of the seafood. Obviously, I don't eat seafood. The dessert selection looked incredible, but again, I'm like, 100 euros? It's kind of crazy. So we decided to just cancel that one and go to Plaza Gardens instead, which is 45 euros. Less than half the price. I know there's no characters and like, it's not in the hotel, but we were still full. So in the end, we didn't do either of those options. We were like, maybe we'll just go to the cocktail bar, Le Fleur de Lys, I think it's called, and get a cocktail and like, also get the experience. But we looked 26 euros for a cocktail considering the Marvel Hotel, which is like five, 10 minutes away, does cocktails for around 15, 16 euros. And they're still lovely cocktails. It's themed, it's lovely. We again just couldn't justify the price. And I know it's like, you're staying at the hotel, go all out, splash it. And I'm like, why do I feel like we're staying at this hotel, we paid all this money, but we still can't afford to be at the hotel in terms of enjoying the amenities. Spending 76 euros on three drinks, like actually hurts my soul. Like a drink doesn't last that long. It's not like it was even overlooking the park. So there's like a whole kind of second mm. lobby area with all of the restaurants. Mm. On the one side you have the bar which looks out to the park exit. And the other side you have the two restaurants and they are looking into the park. So it's not even like the cocktail bar. You can like get a drink, watch the fireworks, see the castle. No, it's not even gonna give you that experience. So yeah, we didn't do any of the restaurants or the bar. I didn't regret it to be honest. I'm sure it'd be lovely, but the price it wasn't worth it for us personally and then there is no quick service option and obviously in disney world you kind of generally have a quick service option to do breakfast grab and go options there is none of that in disneyland paris hotels in general they just don't really offer that they're kind of like you can go to the park or go to starbucks in disney village so yeah there's no like cheaper option it's go all out with 120 euro three course set menu or go somewhere else and then the pool and spa facilities we had planned on going to the pool and then me and alice just like forgot our swim stuff but honestly i feel like we probably wouldn't have had time to go anyway because when you're at disney you are kind of like even though we want go 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 i don't know when we'd have had the time to like get changed go to the pool spend an hour there come back shower get ready again it's a whole process going to the pool and that is also like a luxury if you have time they also have a dedicated shop selling exclusive disneyland hotel merchandise and you can tell it's exclusive. Again, the price was crazy. I was considering this sweatshirt, it was 70 euros. Considered the room spray, because like I said, the lobby smelled incredible. 
it was I think 60 euros for a spray so yeah didn't have any souvenirs from the hotel to take home in terms of buying stuff but I do have some freebies which I can show you now so like I mentioned they have slippers in the room the robes obviously you can't take home but the slippers you can um it says Disneyland Hotel haven't worn them yet but they're very soft and I feel like I'm gonna put them on but I need a little like luxury magical moment. There was a body lotion in the bathroom. Also brought home the soap. Then there was this shoe mitt and also a sewing kit. Then this was left between the beds when we arrived. It says Un Note Royale. It was just a little notepad. Very sweet, look at that gold embossing. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy, but again, had to bring it home. And then each night they will come to your room and do like a turn down service and they will just like kind of tidy out the room again. And they left one of these different cards on the bed each night. So this one is Sleeping Beauty. It says, Le Bel au Bois Dormant. That Sleeping Beauty. Was my accent terrible? Let me know. And then inside they have a different quote in both English and French, as you can see. And this one says, Each of us the child may bless with a single gift, no more, no less, Flora. And it has it all about the different fairies and Sleeping Beauty, which is very sweet. Again, just like the style, it's so cool. And then the second one we got was Mulan. And I don't think Mulan or Sleeping Beauty are represented in the portraits in any of the rooms. So it's cool to see them represented in a different way, like this little note card. Mulan one says, the flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all from the emperor. So see the inside there as well. Very pretty. So now I'm gonna go to the questions I got on Instagram and see if there's anything I didn't answer. People said overall perks of staying there slash on site. So in terms of staying on site, all of the perks for all the hotels are the same. So no matter whether you're staying at the cheapest option, which is the Santa Fe Hotel, the most expensive option, the Disneyland Hotel, all resort guests on site get an extra magic hour. It's from 8.30 to 9.30 in the summer. I feel like that's pretty consistent throughout the year they open at the same time. Over in the second part with Disney Studios, they have the same hour as well. But currently Studios is closing at nine o'clock, I think, and Disneyland Park closes at 11. And that's the same for paid ticket guests and hotel guests. There's no other specific perks that I can think of for staying on site, but that one hour definitely makes a difference. Pretty much the same as in World in terms of like, you just have that extra hour and it just makes a difference, but it's not like, wow what a perk obviously the major perk is just getting to walk back to your hotel i feel like there's hardly anywhere in disney world that you can do that obviously the grand floridian and the contemporary and then the boardwalk resorts from epcot but other than that i feel like all the hotels you have to get a bus whereas this one all the hotels in theory you could walk to i'm not sure about santa fe it might be a bit far but there are buses available as well if you need them not obviously for the disneyland hotel because you're right there but all the other ones you can get a bus in my experience, it's actually quicker to walk than wait for a bus. But obviously, if for some reason you can't walk, there is a bus available. Someone said, is the hotel after the security and bag checks for the parks? Yes, it is. So once you've gone through the initial bag check, when you come from the train station or wherever you're coming from, you are through security. And from then on, there are no more security checks. So you are just in the Disney bubble. You can walk from park to park. But if you were to leave, so Disney Village is included in that kind of like bag check area. But if you were to leave, that area and go to a different hotel you would then have to do another bag check to come back through to disney village slash the parks so disneyland hotel is kind of included in the overall resort if you were in a different hotel you would have to do the bag checks coming back and forth someone said best and worst part of staying there best dream come true it's beautiful the aesthetics it's stunning the location it's incredible the luxurious feel of it is just like so special and magical worst part having to leave because i don't know when i'll next get to stay there again it was extremely special I can't think of a worse part. Like it genuinely was just amazing. People ask about the amenities, the mini bar I've already covered. And then the main question is, was it worth the money and how much was it? So I'm actually gonna pull up now on the hotel, the kind of like latest pricing so we can talk about it. Because obviously it's not cheap. I will say though something about Disneyland Paris, which is kind of unique, is when you book through them, you get a package with your park tickets included. And those park tickets, again, they're not cheap. So having that included in the hotel, definitely makes it seem like a better value maybe than it might be. So let's have a look firstly at how much just the cost of tickets are for Disneyland Paris if you were to stay off site. So we obviously did a three night or day. So let's see how much that ticket costs before we go into all the other numbers. So a 40 ticket if you're coming in August is 340 pounds, which works out at 85 pounds per day. So not too bad, cheaper than Disney World. Obviously, if you were only gonna come for three days, obviously the value is less. So then it's 289 pounds for three days, which works out at 96 pounds per day. So the longer you stay, like in world, I think, it becomes better value for your money. So you have 340 pounds for your park tickets included in your hotel stay. Now let's look at how much the hotel would cost. I'm just gonna pick a Friday over the weekend because generally people go over the weekends. So the other thing about Disneyland Paris worth noting is 
the room price generally stays the same no matter how many people are in it. So the room could be for one person or for four people. Obviously you've got two double beds. So the room cost per person is getting lower and lower the more people that are in the room. Obviously that's great for friends traveling together or people who are splitting a bill. But for a family, obviously the price stays the same no matter how many of you are in the room. For four people staying in one room in the Disneyland Paris Hotel for three nights, it's coming out at £3,672. So that's £306 per person per night for that particular hotel. So obviously 3670 is a chunk of change. Well, let's take off the Disney park tickets, which are £340 per person. 340 times 4 is 1360. This is more math than I've done in years. So once you've taken off the park tickets, the hotel itself is costing 2312, which divided by 4 works out at £575 each for the whole time that you are there. If you were thinking about just the hotel side of it, then the tickets are on top. So obviously it's not cheap. But if we look at the Marvel Hotel, which is like the second one down, so Disneyland Hotel 3672, Marvel Hotel 2998, and again that's for four people, so it's about £670 cheaper. Then you get to Newport Bay, which is 2256, which is obviously going to be £1,400 cheaper. And then Sequoia Lodge 1947, which is a disgusting £1,600 cheaper. And then your cheapest option, the Hotel Santa Fe 1632, that's costing you £2,000 less than Disneyland Hotel. But let's look at, for example, if you want to go during the off season in January, for example, let's see how much cheaper it would be. And that one is costing you 2456, 1200 pounds cheaper if you were going in January during the off season. It also may be that the ones that are only a month away that I was looking at are gonna be more because there's less availability. I feel like 2456 for three nights, four days, four people, tickets included, is probably the cheapest price you're gonna get for that hotel. That works out at £614 per person, including your three nights of accommodation and your ticket. So when you work it out that way, that's kind of a steal. I feel like I'm really girl mathing my way into being like, it's fine, it's a justified price. But that's a lot of maths. Let's actually look at what we paid because it was done a while ago. So, so our total was 3584 but that included the Eurostar. So I feel like we got a pretty good deal. We obviously booked ahead. We actually booked ours in February, so we booked March, April, May, June, July, five months in advance. Obviously it's still a lot of money, but that's how much we paid if you were interested. And when it comes to like, is it worth it? That's such a hard question to answer. For us, it was a magical stay. It was extremely special. Lovely that we could get to have those memories. Obviously you could make lovely memories wherever you're staying. It doesn't need to be in the expensive hotel, but for us, it was just so special. Me and my mum visited last summer. We stayed at Newport Bay, obviously had an incredible time, but every time we would like walk up to the park, we were like, oh, it'll be lovely to stay there someday. Obviously, I know so many people say that and never actually do get to stay where they're dreaming of. So I know I'm incredibly lucky, incredibly privileged to get to have this experience. And I'm so grateful because it truly was just as magical as I'd hoped. But yeah, all that to say is very expensive. I personally feel like it was worth it as like a very special, unique stay. And obviously, is it worth it? That's so relative to your personal situation and it's something for you to weigh up. But I will say that we were incredibly impressed. Obviously we had the slight issue with the USB-C chargers, but like at the end of the day, it was so magical and wonderful and I'll remember that forever. But I got to stay at the Disneyland Hotel, the Disneyland Hotel, the pink hotel. I have one pink in honor of the video, pink, pink. Pink. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment any questions you have about my stay, anything else I didn't answer in this video, and I will do my best to answer it. Subscribe for more fun and magic to come. My next Disney trip is a couple months away, but it's never that far away, you know? I have quite a special announcement, news to share very, very soon, which will be exciting, and hopefully people will be excited for me. We'll see. But that is all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a magical rest of your day. Bye! <laughs>